what is up welcome back to another another episode of validated by victoria i'm so glad you guys are tuning in i look stressed i am stressed because not only I, this will air next week but not only am i trying to move but there's like a hurricane and i got work and i got like a million things going on so i'm like ah, what am i supposed to do but you know my moving people haven't called and so i'm just like hoping you know like it's supposed to rain like when it rains on your wedding day it's good luck so maybe if it rains on your moving day it's good luck i don't know how that works but uh yeah that's gonna be fun tomorrow so we'll see what goes on hopefully by the time this episode airs i am all moved in and comfortable in my new spot um moving in the holidays and i look an emergency alert comes on my phone honestly i think this is fitting because i was just talking about a hurricane so yeah we have a hurricane warning um so that's fun that is fun um it's probably gonna pop up on my other phone so let me grab it and you guys can stay on because and you if you're watching on youtube you're just gonna watch me go on my purse because i do have two phones and i'm weird oh it just it, it popped off so anyways that's fitting guys because i was just talking about there's a storm brewing i don't i swear how many like moving to florida i forget this is like hurricane land and then you know we had an episode about fort myers and all the destruction there and i i don't think this hurricane is going to be as powerful as that thank goodness you never know with the weather you can't control it but um i'm i'm a little traumatized by hurricanes after going to fort myers back and forth so uh yeah love Luckily, my new place has hurricane shutters. So if worse comes to worse, my friend Allison and I, who's staying with me, uh, we'll have to be putting those on. But in the meantime, I'm hoping I can get my move in this week. If not, we got this weekend. Um, but yeah, I hope by the time this episode airs, I'm all moved in. Uh, anything else going on? I'm like thinking to myself, my, my brain is going like 40,000 miles per hour per minute. I don't know what's going on. My life has just been a little crazy. I keep saying that every time, but I just feel like it's the end of the year. Things are wrapping up, um, trying to take some time for myself. So my friend and Allison, my friend, Allison and I, so she's been staying with me for the past like month and a half. Um, we decided like, Hey, I need a vacation. <laughs> And so we decided we we're going to go to South America and I've, I've been to Brazil for the Olympics with the NBA, but I haven't been like to have fun. So we're going to be taking a little excursion. So if you guys have any tips about South America, if you're from South America, um, I've had some people talk about Peru. We're going to be going there. Um, Bolivia, Buenos Aires. Uh, wow. That was country. Buenos Aires. Um, Paraguay, Paraguay, I don't know how to say it. Oh my God, I'm like gonna be butchering all these names, but we're gonna be just bopping around South America in January. So I'm really pumped about that. And that'll be a good break, a good reset for me. Cause if you can't tell, your girl is stressed. But for today's episode, I'm really excited. I have a South, well, he's not from South Carolina. I've, honestly, I forget. <laughs> I never do my research when I come on this podcast cause I like just things to be organic. But his name's Noah Pilato. Um, he plays soccer in Greenville, South Carolina, professional soccer. We He's also like blown up on TikTok, I guess, for, you know, just being a hot dude. Uh, I, you know, if you're a hot girl or hot dude, you just blow up on TikTok. So he's been doing, he's been blowing up on TikTok, been playing soccer. He's been hurt a little bit, been going through physical therapy. And I've asked him to come on my podcast a couple of times. So he's been busy, but finally our schedules have aligned and he's going to be coming on this podcast. So, um, I hope you enjoyed this interview and we're just going to chat it out just like we do on Validated by Victoria. All right. Hey, Noah, what is up? How are you, Victoria? <laughs> Good. I told, I messaged you and I'm like, I look like crap right now. I did an intro and I talked about how there's a freaking hurricane coming and then all, like all the hurricane alarms on our phones like went off. I'm like, oh, you great. Heard? Just, just stressed out, but I'm doing oh. good and I'm glad you're finally able to join. I feel like we've been messaging back and forth for a while and yeah it's been that how's soccer I'm happy going? To be here, but it's actually tough right now i got surgery um on your foot two weeks ago now on my ankle i got a couple screws and plates so it's been a tough season but it's all part of it yeah so okay tell the listeners just like give us like a quick bio like what you're doing like just a little bit about you all right so obviously no palata um, I'm from Washington, D.C., went to school at Penn State University, um, played four and a half years of soccer there while getting a degree in commercial recreation, which basically is like sports management for people who couldn't get into the business school. 
Um, and then I played my first year professionally in D.C. actually for the team that I grew up playing for as a kid, which was pretty special. Um, and obviously with my family being there and stuff, um, couldn't have really wrote a better first professional season. And then I ended up moving on and I played my second season for a team in Greenville. I went down a league. So basically I'm in, uh, for people who are familiar with baseball, basically like AAA. So it's professionally, but it's minor league. Um, and I've been in Greenville. This is my third season here. So I've played pro for four years. Wouldn't change it for a thing. It's been amazing. Um, oh, that's that's awesome. where I am now. I remember when I interviewed you for a magazine, I remember you're talking about like you play for the team that you like, what, what you just said it, but you like, grew up around or played with or what? Yeah. So basically like in professional sports teams have academy teams, which are essentially like feeder teams. So from U12, so when I was 12 years old, all the way up until 18, until I went to college, I played for the team that's called DC United for basically their feeder team. Um, so I was like an academy product and obviously went to college, played, you can't sign professionally or you lose your college eligibility. So there's always that discussion, like when kids are 18, 19, um, whether you want to go the college route or completely forego it and go pro, um, education was pretty important to me. And at a school like Penn State, it was, it was pretty tough to turn down a scholarship to play there. Um, but like I said, I wouldn't change it for the world. Uh, learned a lot in school, learned a lot in college, and then obviously now playing pro has been awesome. I'm actually going to Pennsylvania at the end of the month, and I don't I haven't been there in a minute. It's gonna be cold. I'm the- not ready for cold. So cold. I'm like I'm wearing long sleeves in Florida right now, and I think it's like 75 degrees or something. I hate the cold. You guys are spoiled, man. I'm spoiled. I mean, <laughs> I did live. Oh my gosh, I hit myself. <laughs> I did live in North Carolina. I mean, I grew up in North Carolina. So, I mean, we had pretty much the seasons, but still not cold, cold. But then, and I moved to Manhattan, it was freezing. And I'm like, I cannot. I love New York, but I I cannot do that. Yeah, I'm with you with the cold. Did you like party at Penn State? (laughs) Yeah. Total pivot. No, you're good. I'm actually more comfortable talking about that than soccer. Um, (laughs) Well, we're not going to talk much about soccer. Not good. That's probably better. I, honestly, I don't know. I, let's be honest. I don't know anything about soccer. And okay. the only thing I know about soccer is when I lived in Spain and people were going crazy and they're like, oh, football, football. I'm like, oh, football. And I'm like, oh, no, it's soccer. <laughs> and then like it was like wild in the bars. And I'm just like, I guess I have to like like soccer or something because it's just not as big here as it is in Europe. But oh, yeah. it was lit. Nope. All those soccer yeah. parties in Europe are lit. So um, that's, that's about it. About that. That's all I know about soccer. But yeah, did you like party in Penn State? I feel like that's like a very fraternity sorority score. Uh, in my, yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah, for sure. So okay. my, my freshman year was um, probably the craziest because I redshirted, which basically means like, obviously I'm still on the team, but I just wasn't. I mean, I didn't hit puberty until... Like I went into college, I was like, You're five didn't hit two. puberty? <laughs> no, I, I was like, literally as I was going into college, it's probably when I, like 16, 17, I was hitting puberty, like extremely late bloomer. So I went into college like five foot six, like a hundred pounds. Like I was just this little twig. Um, so obviously going against like grown ass seniors and like men, they were like, you're just not ready. So basically I took a year to like train and get acclimated and just hit the weight room and you know, try to get myself, and I hit like a crazy ghost. I mean, I'm still, I'm 5'10", I'm still not tall. Um, but I put on like a little bit of muscle and a little bit of weight. But my freshman year, like I said, so like you can't compete in games when you're redshirted. So like, I knew I really didn't have any responsibilities other than practicing and lifting. So I was just like going absolutely insane. You were and insane. What is your version of insane? Point, uh, I mean, like at the way that I drink too, like I either, I'm going to drink to like just obliterate myself or I'm not going to drink at all. And I was going out. You like, go big or go like, home. That's what you do. Exactly. <laughs> um, like five nights a week. So it was pretty bad. Like it, it got to a point where I was like, what am I really doing? Um, take a look in the mirror, but I sorted myself out, but I still was like, it's hard not to. Like, I think it was part of, part of my decision to go there was like, thought it was really important to get a good balance of, Obviously, the soccer there is really good. It's a, a Big Ten school, which is like a Power Five conference. Um, social life and academics, I was trying to get like the perfect balance of it all. And 
the party at the, the social life kind of took the best of me for a couple of years. There, Do you have like a funny party story? Let me think about that. How, how like, like a crazy one. How, how PG, like how do how tame I do I mean, have you, you're as tame as you want. Let me think about this. Why you're, why you're thinking about that? Why you're thinking about it? I, I will say, I feel like the sports world, like it's just, they kind of egg you on to party. I don't, I don't know what it is. So I'll talk about like when I, I was an NBA dancer, actually I was going to go to college for basketball. Fun fact, no one knows. And they were going to make me red shirt because I needed a rotator cuff surgery. And I'm like, okay, what am I doing? I'm a five, eight white girl. Like I'm not going in the WNBA. So let's be honest. We need to find a new, like a new thing. And I used to dance when I was a kid, but someone's like, Hey, why don't you try to be an NBA dancer? And I'm like, all right, cool. So I tried out to be an NBA dancer. And like before I drank a little bit, like we would host, like my brother, I had an older brother or have an older brother. Um, and we would host parties all the time. And he was like super popular. I wasn't. And I drink here and there, but I wasn't like a big party person, but love being social until I became an NBA dancer. I never have partied so hard in my, in my life. And I don't know. I think it's just like the environment you're in and like you get so stressed and work worked up. I mean, I don't know how to you know equate dancing with soccer, but I mean, it was pretty, it was pretty tough. And I had played basketball and gone through all that training and stuff to do college. And then I just was like, yeah, I'm not doing this. Um, and I, I just remember partying so hard one night. I would order like that. This is how bad it was. I was definitely a Charlotte party girl because <laughs> I'm just laughing because I just remember all these stupid nights. It's when the epicenter was still around and I, they went, the club owners would know me so well. They would let me order pizza to the club at my table. I would, I was buying tables at like 21, 22 thinking I'm the shit. So like, sure. and then my friends would be all throwing. I mean, this is like before like Instagram was big. So luckily like social media wasn't huge because we would get like yeah. canceled like immediately, but we were like throwing up every, I mean, throwing up in like the epicenter, like just gr- like, come on. I remember walking home one night cause I lived uptown Charlotte and I'm like, how did I get home? Like those, I've never partied so hard. I, I can't do it. I would take like seven tequila shots in a row, still be fine wake up the next day and then go run like three, four or five miles, whatever I was running at the time. Your girl can't do that anymore. I tried to run like a mile this morning before this. And I'm like, <laughs> and that's without the drinking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I haven't even drank. I just stressed. I think the stress is like the equivalent of seven tequila shots right now. Cause I just want to vomit, but no. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that was, I've lived a long life, but I mean, I feel like it's just the environment you're in. Sometimes you kind of get caught up. All the sports people, like, I don't, it's probably at Penn State, but I remember at NC State, because I was still at NC State when I was dancing in the NBA, and we would all just, like, it would just be, like, the little clique of sports people, and they party yeah. so much. I remember squishing in a car with, like, football players and cheerleaders, like, a little car, and I'm like, oh, my God, what is going on? But it was, was just going. the athletes' parties, and they were wild. Penn State was a lot of, like, it was like a pretty Greek life driven school and a lot of the sports teams, like I know for soccer, our coach, we weren't allowed to like pledge fraternities. It was against the rules. So like we would do what's called like honorary brothers or honorary. <laughs> so you would like, you wouldn't have to go through the whole like pledging rushing process, but you would be like part of the fraternity. So like you kind of got the best of both worlds being an athlete and then also having like the ends with the, with the Greek life. I think that's like what every Greek life does. I think NT state, they had like some same thing, but NT state's not okay. I shouldn't say that, but like, I feel like NT state's not heavily frat sorority out like Penn state. Like Was it more country. bars or like house parties or what? Yeah. I don't know. It's very country fried, fried country fried. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, yeah, there was bars and stuff. I don't know. It wasn't like as huge as other colleges. Like for instance, Alabama, you probably, you see that probably on TikTok, but I I've heard of like Penn state. Some people, I, I, I can't remember everyone's names, names, but they were like in a fraternity or something. I just know their parties were pretty wild. Yes, it was definitely wild. So you don't, have you thought of a story yet or no? Um, <sighs> All right, we'll just pivot, and I just want to talk about your TikTok and all these like little thirsty uh, things. I was hoping that wasn't going to come up. Oh, heck yeah, that's getting put. Enjoy that's what we wanted to talk to you about. I think I saw you on TikTok. That's, I mean, 
Yeah, I saw you on TikTok. Not proud of that. <laughs> I'm not proud of that. <gasps> Wait, what is, that right is it, what is this Did one? You not do that? <laughs> what is this one about the Venmo? What? What was it? It's the put your thumb up if you oh, want that. to. It. Yeah. What happened with one? that? No, that so like I don't want to say that everything that I put on that is a lie, but like there's a lot of things that I just completely make up and put out there. And so you made that one up. Oh yeah. For clout, sure. I think there's a little truth to it, but you definitely flub. I like, sold my soul. To it. You sold your soul to TikTok. Mm-hmm. And I'm like I said, I'm not. Proud I of see it. all these but, ones <laughs> of you where I, you need a but date. The thing is, like that one's a, that one's a lie too. You don't need a date. I know there's not even a wedding. Okay, well, I'm heartbroken. Okay, cool, because I was about to submit myself. We can, for say a, we can say there's a wedding and just go to Cancun. Okay. I All right. I that. I'll, I'll go. I need a vacation. I was just talking about, I, I need a vacation. So, um, but I was like, how do I submit to be your date to a wedding? We can make it up. All just right. keep making shit up. When, when did you start your TikTok? I'm like always so interested. So I've had like some people on here, like Alex or Ox, as we like to call him. He's like, um, he he's pretty big on, he has like a million or over a million or two million, something like that. He's pretty, he was a big Vine star and then he went on TikTok and he's hilarious and I grew up with him. Um, and so we had him on the show. So I always like, li- like listening, like, when did you start your TikTok? Just, I feel like everyone did it during quarantine. Yeah, so I did, I started quarantine, but it was all like soccer, S content like yeah. super genuine soccer family and blah, blah, then blah. you went to dirty strippers and Venmo. and i completely took a complete what is this pivot. yeah we went from here to here zero to 100 but then i stopped for like i stopped for like a year and a half um and then my roommate here uh two years ago and then last year same thing as, as your buddy like he's got up over a million like he started taking it pretty seriously and i just saw like the benefits he was reaping from it so then I just tried to take it by storm. Yeah, I feel like people cost. judge a lot. And they're like, oh, you do social media, but you don't understand how. I mean, it it is good to be genuine. And I feel like it's very, like, you need to be genuine online, especially because there's a lot of people watching and people um, compare themselves. And obviously, it's it's hard to, like, make everybody happy, but you shouldn't. But it's always good to be genuine, in my opinion, not fake so much, like the stripper thing. But it's okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm just messing with you but at the same time a lot of people don't realize how it is a business and it is a lot of work yeah. <laughs> and so i'm a little stressed because i have i have to do a live tonight with bavada and i'm like i'm supposed to be moving and this guy's gonna be ma- like um so you have to wear i have to wear like a, kind of a sexual outfit and um this guy is gonna be making for like he's gonna be putting together my bed <laughs> Like he's a, a dream for that guy. And that I'm literally going to be in this like skimpy ass country girl outfit. Like, oh my gosh. Hi guys. Like, I mean, it's a little embarrassing, but I mean, it is work and I have to talk for like two hours straight, but I feel like I'm, I'm pretty good at doing that anyways. But yeah, I mean, social media, I mean, it's hard though, because you got to keep reinventing the wheel and doing more content. But, um, yeah, I, mean, I agree you know, with you. Your platform's doing good though. You have a, like over a million likes. Yeah, it's doing better. So like, like you said about the whole genuine thing, like I'll, I go live as obviously you do as well. And like, I'll sit there and it's not like I'm making that shit up and then just like trying to own it. Like I'll just go live and be like, yeah, I'm like obviously joking. I'm like, everybody in like majority of my audience knows that I just, I'm like on there for begging for attention, like jokingly, but also not really jokingly begging for attention and yeah. making shit up. I mean, anyone who is on social media, I don't care who you are, even if you have three followers, like, you want some sort of attention. Like, I'm sorry. Like, people are like, oh, you're just not here for attention. Everyone on social media, there's some part of them that wants attention. If you didn't want attention, you would literally go rogue and be a hermit in the woods. Like, right. everyone on social media wants attention. And I hate when people comment that because I'm like, are y'all dumb? Because social media, like, it's attention. Yeah, of course. So I get it. Course, I get it. I, I just don't like, I feel like maybe you can talk about this, but like, I don't like when people like show off all this. Like I was watching on TikTok and they're talking about how people have like fake planes, and like fake cars with like rentals. Like, it's weird. What does this world come to? Have you seen the, the kid toy? That's like a, um, 
it's like a wooden ring light with like a fake phone and it's like an actual like toy that and it's like selling like crazy so people don't even use like stuff kids don't even use stuffed animals and shit anymore it's ring lights and phone cameras and you know i'm glad i grew up with no phone and i grew up on a farm in the middle of nowhere and i had to play outside (laughs) I'm so glad. I'm so worried about this future generation of children just always on their phones. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, and and these people who like rent stuff to like look cool. And then those people are going to think like that's how life is. And just like uh, the the stripper stories, who cares? But if you're starting to like flex so hard and I'm like, bro, I, there's a lot of that in Miami. They flex so hard. And then you're like, oh, you live with like 10 guys. (laughs) 10 guys in a two bedroom apartment. Yeah. And I'm just like, quit flexing and just be honest. Honestly, I'd rather be like, I'd rather you tell me like, Oh, I live with 10 dudes. I'm just like hustling instead of being like, here's my Rolex that I rented from a friend. Like, I don't know. I don't weird. <laughs> Social media is like weird sometimes. I don't know. It's, I will say though, um, like you, for you, I think you're obviously like we've only ever DM. This is the first time we've actually met. <laughs> we've actually met, but like you're ex- I've always, I've like read your bio and just like know a little bit about you, but you are um, like extremely transparent, which I think is super important. I think a lot of people, with, especially with the following that you have, like say what, what you were just talking about, try to flex and seem like the world's all like daisies and flowers and pretty when obviously there's real shit going on. And people also, I think people also forget to understand that like you're following aside, like we're still human and still have issues and still have real life stuff going on. Um, yeah, that's what I, I was talking was about like, with Sarah yeah. um, and Meg on the last episode and she was on reality TV and it's just sometimes people got to realize like reality TV is a little scripted, is a little played and like same with social media. Like we are showing the parts of our life we want to show and I try to show parts of my life like I don't really want to talk about, but I think it's good to talk about. Um, but at the end of the day, we're all human and we're all real people. <laughs> we don't we're not made of steel and it hurts sometimes um but a lot you know there's i think that's gonna just be the double-edged sword with social media there's people who just don't get it till the day they die so it is what it is but at least you're you're growing you're doing it well i mean i saw you on tiktok i didn't realize you're in greenville until i interviewed you for the magazine party which you didn't come to which i'm still a little salty about that i was that by the way i'm so pissed it's just my ankle like get a wheelchair (laughs) I should have got a wheelchair. Look at this. You should have rolled in. Have, Ooh, this is like feet it? finder. Wait, can we see it again? <laughs> Did I put them both up there? You, gotta, you, can, you can find those I, on another site. Feetfinder.com. Find Noah. Backslash Noah Pilata. <laughs> so wait, what is next for you? Um, you have anything upcoming? I mean, I guess you're healing. You're going through physical therapy. We scheduled this in between right. physical therapy. Um, more soccer stuff. Yeah, so basically how contracts work in the league that I play in is a lot of like one and two year deals. So my contract's going to be up November 30th. Um, and then I'll, I'll have about two months to shop around. Um, I want to keep playing, obviously. Like I did the surgery in hopes of getting healthy again and being back and playing. So whether it's back here in Greenville or um, signing with another team, yeah, it's kind of over the next two months is like, it's nice because in the off season, we have, like, you literally have nothing. So I have no training, no lifting, no responsibilities at all. But it's a little bit stressful just because your future is kind of just up in the air. Yeah. It's uh, stressful. So hopefully, I mean, my agent's really good and, and I'm confident in my ability to find a team and, and be playing come February. So try not to think too much about that. Just really focus on getting healthy and it's going to be nice to go back home for a little bit, spend some time with the family over the holidays. Yeah. It's been a while since that. Holidays are a good reset. Um, it is sometimes a little stressful for people, but I, I feel like holidays are a little re a good reset and get with your family and get your priorities in line before the new year begins. Um, so the soccer season starts in February. So the contract start in February, oh. like preseason and then the season is like middle of April. So it's about like, yeah, two months preseason. Well, that's dope. Do you guys play like the Charleston? <laughs> I don't do my research, but do you guys play uh, like Charleston Battery? Because that's all I know. Well, now I know like FC Miami or something. I see those guys so that at Kiki on the river all the time. 
no way. That's so yeah. Um, Interesting. That's the league right above me. So okay. my first season, I played with in that league against Charleston and all that stuff. And then this league is the league below. But like preseason. So Charleston's <laughs> like the major leagues. Major leagues. And then the USL, which is the league below, is okay. split into two different divisions. And you're on the top of that. <laughs> It's, well, it's like two sides. Oh, to go, so, okay. So, um, We're getting a learning so no, lesson about soccer. Say, yeah, it's it's too confusing to even try to. It's, it's, go to Europe if you ever want to talk or learn anything about soccer. There's I no know. point. In, in I used to play soccer back in the day. Um, I was a goalie, and that's how I tore my rotator cuff and effed oh. up my basketball career. But. Mm. So do you have a vendetta against soccer a little bit? Yeah. But, you know, you soccer boys are kind of cute. So I just have a vendetta against it. I said you soccer boys. I'll say it. I'll say it. Like right here. You soccer boys are kind of cute. Ooh, oh my God. That kind of looked weird on my video. That's the clip. That's the clip. That's the clip. Okay. I mean, I was trying to be your date for a a fake wedding. So, ew. I'm going to duet that. And I'm going to be like, Don't put me I on submit black. my application. No, I was going to be like, I submit my application. Um, yeah, we'll do that. I'll I'm not that. putting on blast. It, the, yeah. They have to listen to my podcast to find out it's fake. <laughs> I'm so sad. I know. What would have passed? A fake I wedding. Say- I mean, we can like gotta, make a wedding. You gotta do, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess. I had to. I guess. It was desperate times and it called for desperate measures. Desperate, that's desperate measures. You're just thinking of stuff and we can blame it on whatever medication you're taking for your ankle. Yeah, let's do that. We'll let's do that. do that. All right. I've well, always said though, like... What? Ahead, no. no. I was just going to say, I don't, I don't even like want the attention that I like ask for, but I like I basically cannot be without it. It's, it's, a, it's a weird catch-22. Like I don't want it. But then right when I get it, you're like, Ooh, my like, ego is stroked. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wait. So you put that dating feeler out there. Like who is the most, like there has to be like some famous girl that slid in your DMs. Like, Oh my God, can I be your date? Other than me? <laughs> I'm just lying. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, maybe, maybe not. Wait, uh, wait, who is it? Like a singer? Like, I want to know. I want to, I like the I details. Can't. I can't give them. I can't give them out. But I'm you've had going. like some famous chicks sliding your DMs from this I TikTok. Like, I mean, I, what's your? I don't know. Like face? someone that's pretty well known. Like doesn't have to be like a list, but like, oh, okay. Yeah, I get, Yeah, maybe a couple. Okay. Well, your girl's got no so. chance. Uh, <laughs> Interesting. So, uh, girls do slide uh, in guys' DMs. Good. What I'm so old school, but I said girls do slide in guys' DMs. I mean, like, hey, how's that date working out? Yeah. <laughs> but I do think that, like, more so as of late than before. Like, I think, I don't know. It seems like I get more attention in terms of, like, girls reaching out first. And maybe it's because I think I have, like, some sort of clout or whatever, which is um. ridiculous. I mean, it's the blue check mark. You know, people love that blue check mark. I tell you what, and I'm working with, I keep hitting my microphone, but you, I keep like, I'm working with my publicist to get a blue check mark. They, since Meta took everything over, they are like crazy. So Meta, please verify me. I'm on, I'm verified on Google, but I'm not on Instagram or whatever. That seems ridiculous to me. That they've made it like so hard unless you're on a TV show or something. So I'm just going to make my own TV show, I guess. I'll just have <laughs> camera crew follow me around. It'll probably be pretty interesting. I'm not going to lie. Allison, my friend know. Allison and I who do like influencing together, we talked about that. Let's just have like people follow us around, figure it out. But yeah, that blue check mark though does wonders because it hits that top of the message request. If y'all don't have the message request. Is that like, true? Yeah. Anyone with a blue check mark hits the top. Maybe I need to start using that a little bit more. Or maybe not. Little hoe. It's okay. You just outed yeah. you just gave me that secret and I didn't even know it. It does. I mean, I don't know. It pushes you to the top, but wait, 
real quick before we end it out, like me and Sarah had a, had a talk about how guys, I don't know, like you were just talking about how girls like sliding your DMs. And I feel like guys now it's like reversed role. Guys are like women. They want to be like chased. What is that? Are you, you want to be chased? I mean, there's like the, the selfish part of you that like that strokes your ego when someone's coming after you. But like, I was talking about, about this on my live last night, actually, really? about how like, how social media has just like completely ruined dating. Yeah. Um, like people just like, like they're always just looking on to the next thing. Like they, they might be happy with this, whatever. So you're with someone in person and then you open your TikTok and you scroll five times and you go on your Insta- Instagram Explorer page and you scroll five times and then you see three other things that like trigger something in your mind and you're just always looking past. But like, I think we have no um, satisfaction because of social media. That's why. And it, it, it's sad. It's true. Like I said, social media is a double edged sword. It's good to meet people, network, grow your brand, build your business, grow who you are, find your purpose, meet other people. But at the same time, you have zero satisfaction because you're always looking for the next thing, the next best thing. And I was also saying like, it like completely ruined, at least like from what I've seen, like social in-person interaction. It's like, yeah, you'll see someone in a, in a bar or out somewhere and not say a word, but you'll go straight to Instagram and send them a You're message. Like, oh and be my like, God, Yo, I wanted to say hi. Then why don't you just freaking say hi? Like, yeah, are you weird? Hundred percent. I think it's just it's like ruined that. everything. I, my friend Becca just posted something about that where some guy messaged her and was like, I just wanted to say hi. Like, why don't you just come up to me in person and say hi? Like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I feel like definitely this impeded on our human interaction. When I had to go to Fort Myers, like cell service didn't work. So I was like, oh my God, this is archaic. But uh, because all the towers were down. And so like, I was forced to go up to people and like, I, contrary to whatever belief is going on there. I'm a little shy. So like, I don't really like to go up to people and force myself on people, but I had to. And like, I had to actually talk in person, like face to face. And I'm like, this is very odd, but I I feel like that helped my human interaction. I'm like, I need to like, there needs to be days where I just shut my phone off and just talk to people because I'm I'm lacking that and going to Fort Myers with the hurricane relief. Like I, you're forced to do that because there was just no service and no one could talk. So y'all had to talk in person. Everyone's like, this is so weird. <laughs> you, and you felt kind of drained at the end of the day. Cause you're like, this, I'm not used to doing this. Yeah. Cause I I'll work remote. Out. I do everything remote. I do everything from my phone. So it's, um, yeah. So now I try to take time at least on my day to talk to people. Well, that's good. Yeah, well, that's I'm, good. I'm like, that's Got good. to. I'm the exact opposite. Like, I would prefer to like have no contact and just meet in person and feel each other out rather yeah. than like message for however long and then like then. Meet well, that's us. Because okay. well, you didn't come to the party. Well, I whatever. blew that, didn't I? Whatever. It, it, but to be fair, it wasn't really my fault. Yeah, it was. It was your ankle's fault. Yeah. My Your ankle needs to make up. Where did it come? It looks sick. I was looking at pictures from the. I actually know, don't know. I say no, which is ridiculous. But like, follow a couple of the Clemson dance team girls. I think they were there not this year, but last year. Yeah. Maybe. And I saw that they had posted like it looks sick. Yeah. The event looks. I mean, I throw pretty. I I throw ragers. I mean, I used to do that in high school. So even if I didn't drink, I, I'd throw the bet. My brother and I were like would throw the best parties. So just saying, I'll probably throw something else coming up soon, but we'll see. But I'm here in Florida in the meantime, but I'm still going to put my date application in for this fake wedding. Um, But again, let's answer this question before we head out. Do you want to be chased or do you like to chase? Are you old school or are you like the one, the girls, are you like the attention? This could be like a, I would prefer to chase, but like, I also think. Oh, so you would like to be chased. I would prefer to chase. Okay. There you go. All right. That's all we need but, to know. Oh, but. There's a but. There's a but. I think that the chase is like, and maybe it's a little bit toxic, but I think the chase is like toxic. 90% of it. So like, if you chase, like, like the satisfaction you get from chasing something that you don't think you can get and then getting it, like kind of loses a little bit of I don't like your face as I explain this. I'm just thinking. Just simmering. You understand what I'm saying though? Like the chase is a fun part of it. Yeah. But then when you get it, but you're it, not satisfied. 
No, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that, but I'm saying that could potentially be the case. Like the chase for me is definitely the fun part of it. And then like the connection is strong after that, then that's awesome. But there's something about the chase to me that's like, I feel like that's for everyone. It's like when you have, you hunt and then you get your hunt and then you're like, okay, well that was it. Right. <laughs> but that people got to learn to be happy. Like they chased, you chased a girl, you got the girl, be happy with the girl. But see, then everyone's right. like a cheater. That's a whole, I, I can agree. go off a whole different tangent of that. I can call a whole different tangent of that. I've seen so many liars lately. Deeper. I'm going to do a whole Deeper. episode about guys lying. <laughs> Girls I'm lie too. I'm not gonna lie. Well, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, but yeah, girls. Hey, stop deflecting. You're just deflecting, saving the, the women of the podcast. <laughs> we can have. I need to like have a roundtable debate about lying because that's I think a new Give trend. Care, yeah. huh? It's a new trend. Well, I'm glad to have you on my podcast. I have to run to a work meeting, so there's me balancing work, social life and play, but I'm glad to have you on the podcast and you have to get to physical therapy too. Um, okay. So everyone can follow you at Noah Plato on like tell all your socials. I would prefer to be followed on Instagram and see my tick. I don't want anyone to see my TikTok. Okay. We're going to follow him on TikTok, Noah underscore Plato (laughs) five, um, and Instagram at, Oh, it's the same thing. (laughs) They're both the same. But, so, but go follow him post. on TikTok and comment under his thirst trap. There's nothing you want to see on TikTok. I promise you that. Uh, there's everything to see on TikTok. We love it. <laughs> well, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you coming in and I hope you have, um, you heal quickly too. Thank you. Get a appreciate wheelchair it. and like wheel around. <laughs> That's the attention that I've been looking for. <laughs> wheel around. <laughs> wheel it. All right. Well, you have a great day. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. All right. Bye. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Validated by Victoria. Again, please like, comment, subscribe, help boost the podcast. I love you guys when you do that. Comment on my Instagram too. We're trying to grow that. I'm also doing a giveaway. So once I hit a thousand followers on my Instagram, we're doing a $250 giveaway for any of the fans who follow. Um, So yeah, you can check that out on the Instagram at Validated by Victoria. But thank you for tuning in to another episode. Again, if you have any suggestions, go to the Instagram, comment on YouTube. Really appreciate you guys and catch you next time.